you guys look great. Wait, you're sitting down? Am I supposed to? Yeah, she's good. Oh. Alright. <laughs> what? Alright, hi, my name is Catherine. <laughs> Welcome back to the Blondie Bites channel. I'm here with Matt and Tony. All three of us are software engineers, and today we're doing a truth or drink. Sure, their drink. My friend Lisa is going to ask us some questions about life in the tech industry. What's it like to be a software engineer? And we either answer or we take a drink. So to start off, we're going to take a celebratory shot. One of my students got a summer internship. Very exciting. I am bartender. Oh, yes. I am bartender. Oh, man, craft services really sucks in this studio. So we're all doing a what? A soju shot, yes. This is what we do every day in life as a software engineer. We we're just drink. You wouldn't know what a software engineer is like. <laughs> Gotta hit that ball repeat. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Wait, why are these four so hot? If you're watching this, hit like, smash that subscribe button, click the bell for notifications when Blondie Bites posts her next video. Very good, very good. All right, Lisa, I think we're ready for our first question. What language do you code in? English. Uh, Java. <laughs> for me, it's pseudocode. I don't really write code. Want to elaborate on that? I mainly write Jira tickets, and I make my <laughs> other subordinates code for me. When's the last PR you submitted? Honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> Jira stories count as code, right? Okay, is Java front end or back end? I put in back end, but okay. yes. They, that's what you, they tell you me. You could do front end stuff with it. You, there's Android too, if you yeah. do Android okay. development. Got is it. Is it really Java? It, it's Java plus plus. So from a non-software engineer, can you tell me what a software engineer does? <laughs> Stack Overflow. So we just copy and paste code online and push on the PR and then our companies just pay us. Exactly. So the best part about being an engineer is there's always someone who's already done it. Yes. So you just gotta find it and then, <laughs> yes. you know, don't get caught copying somebody else's homework. So change the variable name. <laughs> and they've done it better than you could ever implement it, so just copy. Yeah, you might as well just ask them. Okay, so what I'm hearing is about how many hours a day do you actually work? I have to find work. Well, there's a lot of thinking that occurs. Okay. Like, because if you build the wrong thing, then you've wasted the company's time. Instead of it taking like a month, it might take six months or a year or longer to fix it. So there's lots of thinking that has to happen. Yeah, that's pretty much why I tell my manager too. <laughs> <laughs> I also think better with my eyes closed and in a recliner. <laughs> We, so we think we write code. A lot of meetings. There's code reviews. Um, that's another. That's other people's problem. Nobody just, likes them. I'm yeah, forced to do fire it. Fire and forget. Just push but, the PR like, out there. But you can learn a lot from code reviews. Like. So unlike Blondie Bites, I, during code reviews, I never pull down the other person's code and run it. I just eye it and I just see if it works. Yeah, it. does it pass the eye test? Yeah, does it pass the eye test? <laughs> Their variable names are good, but what if it like causes the bug? Like, how do you know? Well, that sounds like a bad problem. What, what if it's the bug? When fraud, right? Yeah. It's like their problem. What, what, but you approved it! <laughs> Yeah, but like that never comes back on us though. So no, exactly. when, once Pratt support gets involved, then we start caring. Exactly. Whenever there's an actual problem. But until then, you just kind of cross your fingers. Okay. Damn How me. many times have you broken prod? Once. Uh, like, I haven't broken prod per se. Okay. We've made infrastructure really changes that were not necessarily needed and did not work as expected. Okay. But it didn't break anything. About 20 times. <laughs> 20 times? No, I've been a software engineer for like 10 years. In 10 years. That's 20, twice a year. That's, I think that's normal. Okay. I was just kidding. This is like in the last year. If you're like a new software engineer, like breaking prod, that's like, you're not supposed to break prod, but if it happens, it happens. But when you get to like higher levels of software engineering, breaking prod then. I get yelled at a lot as a senior <laughs> engineer. <laughs> If I break prod, it's my fault. If a junior engineer breaks prod, it's also my fault. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you should review the PR center. <laughs> I don't know. We're, yeah, we're that always like a lot of work. Like, what are the chances they break prod if you're just a lot of proof? Being senior, there's this perk where you can just force your uh, mergers into oh, me. bank and yeah. no one questions you. How much do you, as a software engineer, <laughs> make? <laughs> Truth or drink? It's, it's <laughs> we'll take a shot. Cheers. 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 Well, software engineers, like, you're, you have your salary and then you have, like, all the extra money you get if you stay with the company for, like, five more years. Golden handcuffs. Yeah. So you might get 50k a year, but it's all in these stocks and options and you can't really use them until, you know, if you, unless you stay for a while. Do you make over six figures as a software engineer? Yes. 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 What makes a bad software engineer? 
I would say a bad engineer is someone that is not collaborative. So maybe they have an idea and they just push it into the code base without really talking to anyone, without really getting it, a couple eyes on it to make sure people are good with the solution or good with the architecture, the new design that they want to introduce. Non-collaborative engineers are not my favorite to work with. If they're not a good team contributor and work with the team versus like just a solo contributor, it sometimes makes it very hard to work with them. They might write stuff that's not maintainable, they don't talk to other team members. If they can't like hit a deadline, they're gonna like just not say anything and it blows up on everyone's face. So be a team contributor. Also people that don't learn from their mistakes, like yes. if you if you grade proud once, that's okay. Like, you still learn. But if you if it's a pattern, you know. Mm -hmm. What do you think of engineers that ask a lot of questions? Smart. The, the ones that are very introverted and quiet and never ask questions and never try to learn from other engineers are the worst engineers to work with. Software engineering tends to attract like introverts, but sometimes you just have to like break out of your shell. Yeah, if you can't ask for help, I mean, you're just going to cause more problems for them down the line and that will eventually come back and blow up in everyone's face. Do you define yourself as an introvert or an extrovert? Introvert. <laughs> extrovert. <laughs> well, it's, I don't know both. Uh, I lean more towards introvert. How many tech recruiter emails do you get a week? They all go to spam now, so I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah, smart, I, smart. I don't really look at them. I just assume a lot. When did you start like getting those emails? When you were like an intern? No, I, as, soon, as soon as I went full time is when they started yeah, coming. Same. Like, oh, you're, you're no longer contractor. You're no longer yeah, you have experience. Though. Yeah, you have experience. Yeah. Like, especially after the first year of being full time. I started getting bombarded. Like, how do you like it there? You're looking for a new position, uh, this and the other thing. To follow up on that, do you have any advice for a beginner software engineer? Ask questions. Ask a lot of questions. <laughs> like, people don't expect you to know everything. They expect you to ask questions about what you don't know, which will be a lot but of But take notes, though. Like, don't be asking the same question 20 times. Test your code. Yeah, like, one of the things that uh, very new engineers struggle with is they feel like if they ask a question, they'll, they'll look like, you know, dumb. Like, it'll just be embarrassing and everything. And as a senior engineer, I'd rather you know exactly what to do in your story than not be sure and then push up something that breaks product. I know you guys are all back-end developers, but why do you think it takes front-end two weeks to change the text on a button? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> There's... There's a lot that goes into the design process. I mean, well, there's you ever accessibility. Been yeah. Accessibility. Oh, that's that's a legitimate. Um, that's a legitimate answer. Like they, the syndication, or like if there's different partners with different language support. So maybe you have to have a given piece of text in English and Spanish and French and all these different languages. So you have to make sure the button has the right text. But how many ways can you say next? I know, changing <laughs> all those strings with find replace is very difficult oh, across man. five files, you know? <laughs> how do you how do you do it? Like I don't know. Do you think our IDEs can do that? Wait, what's an IDE? I go to Notepad. Integrated I, development environment. I don't even know how to spell IDE. It's hard, it's like it's interesting. In the software development industry, like you are so forced to niche into a specific area. Like you are the back-end engineer, you are the front engineer. Maybe you're the full stack, but you're probably not full stack. You're probably one of the two, or you're the machine learning engineer. And so to understand what front end does is so difficult. Like we like I have no idea the struggles. Like I so wish we could like go to front end and then go to back end, but like the way the career ladder is built like you have to stay as whatever your type is in order to grow your career it sucks every new engineer has his dream of becoming like a full stack developer and that might have been possible in like the 90s or 2000s yeah. when technologies were wasn't as advanced now for you to become a mid-level or senior engineer now you have to specialize yeah if only we had a front-end engineer to ask us to <laughs> yeah. maybe he didn't show up okay can you explain the difference between back-end engineering and front-end engineering well front-end gets all the accolades because you can see what they're doing and back-end does all the work yeah no. we, do all, we do all the work they get all the credit they yeah. do a lot of the screens <laughs> they make things look pretty and we, and make, we do the real and stuff. we make things work yeah back end we build like the infrastructure, we build a database, we might have like some, you know, AI or machine learning we build into that and we just create a nice API for yeah. our clients from end to call. And client tells us to jump, we ask how high. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy coding. We'll do a part two. Do an intro. Okay. Yeah.
Yeah, whoa, too. whoa, whoa, my contract only speaks Yeah, my contract only, talk to my agent about this. <laughs>